Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. As they were parents, they have now learned to slow down. They've learned to listen. They learned that not every issue is a hill to die on. Not every issue is a time to be a drama king or a drama queen. It's a time just to listen and let that person feel comfortable, just to rattle and rattle and rattle. Now listen carefully. Often it's because though parents are so busy, they don't have the time to slow down long enough to take off the onion skin layers of their children so their children can really get down to what's bothering them. Where grandparents, maybe because of a little slower, softer lifestyle, they can take the time with the grandkids. Sometimes the, grand, the parents don't have time to actually spend it with the kids, where grandparents can actually drive them back and forth to ball games and things like that, and so now they can spend more time doing that. And that's why often that the wisdom of the gray heads, the wisdom of the aged, they're the ones that can get through to the kids because, first of all, they built that very unique, loving, gracious relationship. So now when grandma or grandpa or tutu begins to speak, they're able to receive. And what I would like us to do is to be maturing as ourselves that we too would be very similar to our grandparents who would listen more than they would even speak. Here's the next one, departing from sin. Sometimes we're so convoluted with sin in our own life that we really don't care enough to slow down to listen to another person's need and it says here in Taman, he said, to depart from evil is understanding. Boy, the first way to get understanding is to get sin out of your life so you can think clearly. Here's the next one I like. This one is found numerous times in Psalm 119. It's actually prayer. If you want to have understanding, sometimes we just ask for it. David, who wrote this, said, make me understand the way of your precepts. Lord, I need help. I need to understand. What is this person going through? Specifically here, Lord... What do I need to know about your word so I can take your word in a most accurate fashion, attached to compassion and care, bring this to the people I want to speak to right now. So Lord, help me to understand this so I could reunite the right verse with the right pain that the person has. So prayer is a big thing. And I hope that we add more prayer in this. And we're going to see how important it is because you'll see how many times it's found in Psalm 119. Here's another one. It's called receiving correction. Receiving correction gives us understanding. It says, He who disdains instruction despises his own soul, but he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. I'd like to, if you would live, allow me for just a moment, share with you a, um, a personal story. I grew up in a home that was really rough and tough and hard to diaper. My dad was a very strong, very uh, wise businessman as a painting contractor in construction, and he was the son of a contractor, and it went all the way back into the 1800s. I was not that way. I'm, I was more academic. I liked to read. I sensed myself more teaching and other stuff than working with my hands so much. Well, when I was in sixth grade, because I probably was a pretty precocious kid, my, my mom and dad were looking for something for me to do during the summer because I was too young yet to get a job at 11. So they looked in the school uh, paper that came in that said you could take classes during the summer. And so we're looking at all these classes and I guess to get me away from mom for a while so I wouldn't cause her to pull her hair out, they would look for a class of something for me to do. So I took swimming, I took scuba diving, I took some of that kind of stuff because I like water. But they said, you know what we want you to take? Now, can you imagine an 11-year-old boy wanting to do sports, wanting to be outside? We want you to take typing. Can you imagine that? And nobody in our family typed. So why would, my mom isn't a secretary. We didn't have secretaries. We didn't have any of that stuff. And I don't want to marginalize that. There was no computers in those days. And dad says, son, I believe you should take typing. And I want you to learn how to type. Now, it would have been nice had my dad given me all the background about why he wanted me to do this. Later on, I found out. I'll explain that in a moment. But he said, I, want you to, and I, I don't want to take typing. And as soon as you do that with a dad who's coming from the old country, he simply said, you're doing it. I told you. You get signed up. No more word about it. Did you have a dad like that? Maybe they went to the same dad school. But anyway, so my mom then took me to the school, and I registered for typing because I was going into junior high and they were going to teach it at this brand new junior high in the summer. Well, I signed up reluctantly. I wasn't really, I, I wasn't a rebellious kid outwardly. Inwardly, I really didn't want to do it. And so I signed up for it and agreed to go do it. About a week later, my dad came home in the middle of the day. I was in my bedroom. I was laying in my bed and I was reading, which I really enjoyed doing. I love to read. So I'm reading. And my dad says, 
what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm reading. Why aren't you in typing class? And I said to Dad, I said, typing isn't until next week. And he said, no, 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 typing started this week. And I said, no, no, Dad, typing is next week. And he said, no, 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 typing is this week. And then my dad lost it because he then thought I was lying to him, that I was using that as an excuse not to go. And so my dad just really just lit into me at that time. It was the, the time I saw my dad, the most anger with me ever in my entire life before or since then because he thought I had lied to him. Well, afterwards, obviously, I took typing. After all the negative energy was gone towards the end of summer, my dad sat me down, and we had a good time together. My dad, whatever happened, we, we talked it out. And here's what I found out from my dad. Nobody graduated from eighth grade ever, ever got out of eighth grade and went on to ninth grade in the Pons family. He wanted me to at least graduate. He knew that people were learning how to type and you needed to type more if you're going to do your papers. Nobody else in our family would type my papers for me. He was hoping that I would go to college and he says, Stan, I don't want you to be a painting contractor or a painter like me. I really would like for you to go to I don't know what you're going to do in college, but somewhere I would like you to go to school. You need to learn how to type. And so my dad then explained what that was. Then... The second lesson I learned from that is you never lie to your dad. You never, ever lie. And so today, I can handle some junk that people would give to me, but the things that I can't handle is when someone will prevaricate, will sandbag me, will lie to me, will spin a story, will manipulate, or something is done and someone lies about me or whatever. Lying is a big thing to me. And here's my lesson that I learned overall was this, that if my dad would have come to me earlier on and sat me down with an understanding spirit and said, son, here are some things that I'm sensing, some direction in your life, and I'd like to make some strong suggestions of how this would impact your life, and maybe even threw in a reward in there. Might have helped. On the other side, it might have helped a little bit more if I would explain to my dad that I'm having a little tough time. I'm having to go to a new building that's going to be a junior high where I hear that they abuse boys over there in... in, in, in physical ed and I don't know if I want to go to that I'm an 11 year old kid going I don't want to do typing that's a girly thing to do now don't marginalize you but that's a girly thing to do and I, I want to do a man thing right here we never did that there was none of that understanding and I'm wondering if the mantle of a lack of understanding spirit from the beginning has continues down into my life and that's why today's message while I'm giving it to you if you're not here today I know one person that's been most convicted by it it's by me that I want to develop that and so as I learn sometimes correction can bring about an understanding spirit. And I pray that we'll step up and allow that correction to occur. One more here, and that is living in God's word. David in the same psalm says this, I have more understanding than all my teachers. So in other words, how can I have more understanding than those who are giving me truth? How can I have a greater understanding of truth and perhaps a greater understanding on how to deal with the truth than even those who are the truth tellers, the teachers? Here it is. It says, for your testimonies, that's not the answer. For your testimonies are my meditation. That's the answer. So I have to be meditating on God's word. So if I can share this with those of you who are Christian, those of you who are not, this is going to sound so weird, and I don't mean to be weird, but this is biblical. There is something magical or mystical that goes on between God's supernatural living word right here that's truth. That if I purposely meditate in God's truth, that God supernaturally with His Spirit who is known as a teacher, Jesus Christ, the personification of teaching, the content being God's Word, comes to me, the student and the child of God, something begins to happen that begins to take my old non-understanding nature and begins to convert it new by meditating in God's Word. There's nothing mystical or magical about meditating. It's just when you do, something takes over that I can't explain. Years of counseling may not even happen, may not even help but it's being in God's Word. But it doesn't stop there. It goes on to say, I understand more than the ancients. So besides understanding more than the truth tellers, I understand more than the people who have known truth longer than my teachers. Why? Because I keep your precepts, which is important too, because while we meditate on God's Word that is changing our thinking and changing perhaps our attitude, but now we have to act upon it by let something change in our life by doing. And here's where this comes in. Those of us that struggle with an understanding spirit of helping others, maybe the first thing we need to do is immerse ourselves more into God's Word. Look at all the verses. Do a scripture search on the whole concept of understanding. Just find it in your Bible. Understood, understand, understanding. Look up all those words in scripture. Meditate on the whole context of that. And then once we get these truths, as soon as we do, allow that to begin to change us purposely. 
work at having an understanding spirit. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot of stuff done in the flesh. No, that's not. It's just choices of allowing the understanding one to now transfer that in you out to others. So it's the exchange life. But it's a choice, and sometimes it's going to be a little bit more work because we're going to have to choose to do that. And it's those choices at times when our nature wants to pull us in another direction that makes it a little bit more difficult. And I hope that may not be the case for you, that that will be very easy. I want to end with some practical thoughts, and this will be it. So if you want to jot these down, you can. I want to specifically speak to those of you that are dealing with kids right now, parents right now, those of you that are working with children with CEF this summer, those of you that are working with children in homeschooling, educators, those of you that are grandparents. I would like to speak about the understanding spirit because if, I, I believe that, that maybe what occurred with me, maybe I'm speaking too personal here, but what occurred with me was that I didn't have a model of an understanding spirit growing up. And maybe what I'd like to do is to shift some of us to develop an understanding spirit more quickly toward our kids so they don't have some of the challenges that I'm now having to learn at nearly 60, all right? So here's something that you might keep in mind. First of all, showing understanding is a very effective way to show that you care, especially with children. They get a lot of threats, they get a lot of advice, and they get a lot of commands, but it's a real treat when someone takes the time to communicate to that child that you understand exactly what that child is going through. And it takes time before you ever give them the advice, the the command, or even the threat. For him, that child is a very small thing that you understand them. But at the same time, it makes a huge difference. Do you really understand them? Will you take the time? Next, understanding is shown with both words and actions. Let me give you an illustration shown with words and actions. If your daughter loses her favorite doll... An understanding response might include just taking the time to help her look for it. Not, oh, you lost it again? You ought to take better care of your toys or whatever. It might, oh, it's gone? Here, let me help you find it. Now, to do that means you've got to stop your schedule, your busy schedule, which you're way way behind in, and slow down because that doll is like a living being to that child. And if it's a girl, God is starting to work into her mothering instincts. Thought about that? So take the time to go look for that little lost dolly and say, you know, honey, you miss your little dolly, don't you? And maybe if that doll is not found, you might stop long enough and say, you're worried, aren't you? That you might not find her and that you're worried that she's safe wherever she might be. Would you feel comfortable right now, honey? Why don't we just pray? Because God sees your little doll right now. And whether we find it or not, God will take care of that little doll. And then later on, you can talk about carelessness, leaving things laying around where people can take it or misplace it or whatever. But right now, feel her pain for a moment. Number three, the key to understanding is seeing and experience through the child's eyes and trying to understand what it means to the child. So instead of saying, I know how you feel, and then you want to, um, want, you lost your doll, let me tell you something, I lost the keys to the car. You know, they, don't, they can't relate to that. So it's not a one-upsmanship. Oh, I know what you feel like. I've gone through this. I lost a doll too, but I made it. I'm still here. Instead of that kind of stuff, what you might do at that time through their eyes, you might say, you feel real strongly about this, don't you? You're a little nervous about that doll and not getting another one like it, aren't you? I know right now you may be a little embarrassed if someone knew that you lost something that meant so much to you. Don't you feel that? And so for that moment right then, see if you can be that little child as if you lost it and what emotions are you going through? Now, it's not to say you're not going to teach them truth about carefulness, etc., and orderliness and all the other character traits we've been teaching. But at that moment, before you give them that new character trait, you want to let them know that you're on their wavelength. Another one is simply this. It is also very important that when you're spending time with that child, going through their pain, and they know it, you're building a lifelong relationship. They know you love them because you love what they feel at that moment. And then finally this. The clearest signal that it's time for understanding is when a person is going through a strong emotional outburst. It could be crying. It could be anger. It also could be something not so negative as pain. It could be where your son comes home and says, I hit the ball and I won the game. And he's so excited. You run up to him and say, hey, how does it feel to be a winner? And then you give him a high five. Isn't that great? I'm so glad, man. This is a great day, isn't it? Let's celebrate in some special way for that moment. Just let him 
know that you entered into that moment long enough to feel that excitement with them. Now let me give you some cautions. The caution is Satan will take this message and so your kid will be a real, at times, and you know your own kids, you're the only one who can say that your kid is a brat. But sometimes your kids act a little bratty. If you agree, just nod your head. Well, let's say your kid is so out of control now, you might say, I understand you're angry right now and I understand that right now that you are really upset. But right now is not a good time to use those words that you're using because with that, you're hurting other people. And so let's talk about this. And so you won't let them continue in with that. Now, may I say this too? Some people are so sensitive that they expect everybody to understand them. I'm going to tell you that they don't. Some people are going to express they understand you differently than what you want them to. And so at times, don't manipulate people, intimidate people, or accuse people of not caring just because they didn't give you the words that you wanted to hear to prove to you that they really did understand Don't design and create and put up various size hoops for people to jump through because I'll tell you now, the more you do that, the more you're going to find that people who would like to understand you, they'll leave you alone and let you suffer in your pain or they'll let you celebrate alone instead of with you. So don't put up so many hoops. And so that time when they come, thank them for being there and let them know how much you appreciate that. And I'd like to bring this to a close now by simply saying that Nobody understands your pain more than Jesus. For there was a moment in his life that he took all the sin of all the world on himself. He was tempted in every area as you and I are tempted in. True, there was no sin. But at the same time, he knows that temptation that you went through. The time that you were perhaps tempted to cross the line to tell a lie or to steal something. Now he couldn't do it because he was God. But at the same time, he knows the temptation. He really cares for you. And that's why he said, you know what? I know the wickedness of the world more than you do. I've witnessed it. I've experienced it longer than any of you have. And he says, and I know what that's done to you. And I care. So like we sung this morning, he says, I'm going to grace you instead of condemn you. I'm going to grace you by taking all your sin on myself. I'm going to love you the way you are. I'm going to die on the cross and give you eternal life in heaven so you can finally sing. I'm finally home if you'd simply trust Christ as your Savior. My friend, that's an understanding God. Yes, we're underneath His condemnation. That's the truth part. But the grace part says, but you can also be underneath my love and my forgiveness. And He says, now the choice is yours. I care. I'm here. You come. And I pray that you'll come to Christ by faith alone. It's not by your good deeds. It's just by trusting Christ. And for the rest of us in here, Christ is so understanding, he amazed the great teachers. His word is so full of truth that if we abide in it, we'll know more than our teachers and understand more than the ancients. It's all there for us. And so this week, when you're faced with a test that he'll test you with, when your child, your son, your daughter comes to you with an issue, will you slow down and listen to them? Ask them the questions. Connect to where they are in their emotions. So that at the right time, once they know you really care, you can give them the truth. But they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let's pray, shall we? Well, fellow travelers, this is our decision time when we close our eyes and bow our heads at this time of our service. This is where we give each of us an opportunity to get alone in this room privately with God. Now, we'll do it in our mind. And it begins with humility. It begins with saying, Lord, I know I have not been very understanding. I've been quick to judge or quick to give advice. I've been been quick to move away when someone else was going through either a victory or a defeat. And Lord, I am sorry for that. And I want to thank you that you understand me so well that you paid for that sin of selfishness and lack of awareness and that you'd still give to me by your grace eternal life. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you that I can have eternal life in heaven and that someday I too can sing, I'm finally home. Now my friend, if you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, why don't you simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but the best in a how, I'm going to trust you to give me eternal life. I pray you do that right now. If you're doing that, I'd like to pray for you so with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, if you're trusting Christ as your Savior right now, then simply say, Lord, I'm believing that you died for me on the cross. That belief is the trusting in Christ. 
In a moment, I'll have you slip up your hand. Now, raising your hand won't save you. Me praying for you in a moment won't save you. And I won't have you stand up or come forward. But I want to know, are you trusting Christ? Do you understand that he died for you? Do you know that I understand your dilemma right now as you're try- trying to come to a point of an eternal decision you're about to make? I want to give you all the time necessary. But I also don't know when your heart will stop beating. So I want to lovingly nudge you right now that wouldn't it make sense for you to trust Christ right now and then after you do, continue your journey of seeing how true this all is rather than wait to think you might have time to understand it all first before you trust Christ? Why don't you trust Him now and then continue your journey of discovering Christ? Is there anyone in here that would like to let me know silently that you're trusting Christ today? and do it by an uplifted hand. So right now, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior today, never done it before, today's the day, and you'd like for me to pray for you, would you slip up your hand and put it down right now? Is there anyone at all? Put it up, put it down. Okay. All right, the rest of us in here today, is there someone you know now that has been going through something and you're not sure that they feel you understand them? Did you uh, end a conversation with someone too quickly? And it was just a matter of giving information back and forth and you kind of left it unfinished. You didn't leave it where that person knows that you care, you really care. Now, you, it's not enough to say the words. You have to mean it and communicate it in their language. Is there someone you have to go back to to open up that conversation again? And you'd like to have prayer because you know that you need to do it and it's a little difficult because it happened a few days ago and... You kind of want to let bygones be bygones and move on, but the Spirit of God is telling you, no, I kind of spilled some milk and I need to go back and kind of clean it up. Pastor, would you pray for me? Because I do want to understand them, and, and I do, but I don't think I communicated it where they know that I care and I do understand. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone in here with an uplifted hand that would like for me to pray for you? Because you know you've got to go back and make sure they understand that you care God bless you. And then are there any in here today, the last call is for those that struggle with not being so understanding. You're very quick to judge, quick to speak, quick to criticize, quick to give advice, quick to command, quick to maybe even threaten without that person knowing that you understand their position or understand their personality or understand what they're going through. And you'd like to have prayer because you need to slow your life down. You need to fill it full of God. And you want to really take the time to communicate your genuine care for that person so that you then can give them the truth that they so much need. How many of you would like to have prayer? My hand is up. Would you like to have prayer too? Is there anyone? Put your hand up. God bless you. Many hands on that one. I believe if we do this, folks, this is huge. This is bigger than our church. If Christianity was more like this, I wonder if more people that had an alternative lifestyle would have come to Christ. I wonder if we wouldn't be the punching bag of every late night comedian. Or we'd be marginalized for our faith by every politician. If we had a more understanding spirit, not compromising truth, not one bit, but that we communicated that truth in a spirit of really understanding. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you and we want to say thank you for you being the personification of understanding and that you understand us. And you understand our propensity based on our backgrounds and our personalities and our maybe the way we were modeled and trained and all. But Lord, right now we are so humble. We're saying, Lord, remake us, redo us, reconstruct us. We want to reinvent this part of our life. We want to be more understanding. Lord, help us not compromise truth. Let's not back away from it. Let's not change the truth. But let us change our tone. Help us, Father, to be filled with a spirit of understanding in such a way that we don't just glibly say the words to do the speak part, but that we do the heart part. And then, Father, through that, I pray that our church would begin setting a new pace, a new model, a new paradigm of Christianity, that we would be like you with grace and truth. 
In your name we pray. Amen. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.